Hello and welcome to this pit stop for Alone, a game from Horrible Games designed by Andrea Crespi and Lorenzo Silva. In Alone, one of the players is very much alone as the sole survivor of the crash of a spaceship and they have found themselves on a station out in the galaxy. All of the other players, one to three more, will control the creatures on this space station trying to prevent the Alone hero from completing at least two of these missions in order for them to win the game. The game is played over a rounds. Now, there's no maximum number of rounds, but once we get through three of them, it's going to become more difficult for the hero because all the creatures will go into nightmare mode. But on each of the rounds, the hero will take at least eight actions with the capability of being able to spend adrenaline to take more actions on a turn, or you can use that also to heal if you wish to. When a hero takes an action, the creature players that actually have turns of their own, they just wait for this to happen and then they may play reaction cards from their hands. There are four different decks of them, you choose two to play with at the beginning of each game and they'll guide you in certain directions and we will come to that. In terms of the hero actions, they take an action and click one of these over. Basic thing they can do is to move. Now they can move one sector. There's a worm in here attempting to attack us. If we do move out of a sector with a creature, it gets to get a free attack at us. Now we move into a sector we've already been in, that's fine, no problem. If we moved into an unexplored sector, we're taking a risk there. Now, in this case, when we move in here, as we'll see in a second, there is a corridor there that happens to have one of these hybrids in it. And when you move into an area or a creature moves into your area, you start taking self-control damage because these creatures are scary. And the amount you take is written down here, so we'll take two damage. There are two tracks for your health. If ever one of these tracks reaches all the way down to zero, whenever you take damage of that type, you start moving the other one down. If they both reach zero, then unfortunately the hero has lost the game. So you can move like that and it will be risky for you. There's another thing you can do, which is explore, in which you choose a direction and then the alien players will tell you what's in that direction. Now, how are they going to know? Well, the alien players behind the screen have got this map laid out of the entire game. There are always two levels to the station and they're always keeping track of exactly where the hero is on that map, where the different monsters are, which areas are lit or unlit, which are dangerous, where the different rooms are and where the missions need to be completed. Now the hero will start on just one tile with none of this knowledge and they're going to have to move around, explore and find out what's going on in order to complete their missions before the creature kills them. Now if we did choose to explore from this space, we could explore in the north direction and we would find out that in that way there is another corridor. This one happens to have a light control unit on it. And we could choose to move into that corridor if we wish to in a subsequent action. And if we did move in here, in fact, we could then interact, which is the third thing you can do with this light control unit. And that would turn on the light in this space and also in spaces in one of the other directions we chose. It happened to be if we did choose to do it in this direction over to the right, we would find that there are some stairs which will lead to the other level and when we can make, start making decisions about where we want to go. And this is all being controlled and laid out by these creature players who can see the whole layout. Also, if we explored, we'd have seen there's a door there. Now doors, unless you choose to lock them, whenever you move adjacent to them, they will open up. And in this case, that's gonna reveal that the room above there, because behind doors are always rooms. When we move out there, that door would close, for example. But it's always rooms behind doors and we would find out that is the infirmary. Now the infirmary is linked to one of our missions as shown here on the card and as shown on the creature's map. And that would be good news for us and then we can decide whether we wish to complete that mission. In this case, when you complete a green mission, you're gonna get a companion. Now there are four heroes to choose from at the start of the game. You choose one and another random one will become the companion that you can get for yourself. This is the medic who's gonna help us out to some degree as long as we get in that room and complete what we need to do. Now I said we can turn on this lighting unit to turn on the lights. It happens to be in this scenario, and there are lots of them, it's a fire hazard, and that turning on the lights isn't automatic as it would be usually, we'd have to roll for it. And the blue ones always have some kind of hindrance to your game, and when you complete that mission, you remove the hindrance, and the green ones always have a companion you can collect. You must complete one of these two missions before you can move on and do the final mission, and they have all different sorts of win conditions. This one happens to be that we've decided that there's hormones in the air driving these aliens crazy to attack us. So we're gonna study them. So we need to get up to this laboratory, which is, happens to be on the top level. Again, we don't know that yet. And then we need to do five interactions in there. But what we can do is collect hormones from defeated aliens to reduce the number of interactions we need to do. But the number of hormones we're carrying will mean that the alien players can move these around secretly. 
and then they'll be caught sort of descending upon us while we're trying to race to the laboratory against the time before they turn into nightmare mode and all the rest of that. There are lots of these different scenarios. This is a random setup. There's also a 12 scenario campaign included in the box in which you play each scenario with a specific hero and a specific setup of missions and a specific end game baddie because you can get stuff like the worm queen attacking you or maybe the treacherous colonel. Now we haven't gone through all the actions we can do with the hero so let's go through those quickly. If you're in the same area as a monster you get to fight against them. And when you fight against them, you're going to roll dice. You usually roll two, but there are items and things you can collect by doing search actions. When you do a search action, you draw one item from a corridor or three from a room and keep them. And they're going to give you various stuff, such as tracer bullets to help you fight, flamethrower, help you fight a lot and possibly light up an area if you've set light to an alien. A battery pack will help you turn on those lights or a jet pack will help you fly moving around the place. When you fight normally though, you roll the two dice and you're looking to get these hits. This symbol is always a miss and there are this symbol. Now for us as heroes, when we're in the light, that symbol will mean a hit and when we're in the dark, it won't. For the creatures, the creature players can put these danger tokens down depending upon how many cards they've played during the game, during a round. And for them, this symbol becomes a hit when you're in a danger area with them. And in fact, at the end of a turn, the creature player doesn't have to do anything. Any creatures in with you will attack you, but their stats change upon whether they're in the dark or light. In here, the worm gets to throw three dice and is very dangerous, but in the light, they can't attack you at all. And depending upon how human or alien they are, that will affect them more or less in the dark or the light. The last of the six actions you can do is to locate. When you're standing area in any area, you say to the alien creature, okay, how far away is, for example, the laboratory and how far away are the stairs? And they must honestly tell you how many sectors away it is to move there in the quickest way possible. And then from there, you can possibly move around and try and triangulate what they're telling you and work out if you're getting closer to or further away from, well, let's say, the infirmary. And then you're trying to build up some sort of idea of what the map is in your head. And you can keep track down here if you wish to with these tokens. Also, when you kill creatures, the first time you're gonna get one experience point, and the second time you'll flip that over and you'll trigger a special action for yourself, like being more effective at searches or getting more adrenaline tokens or re-rolling a die when attacking, whatever it is from the different types of creatures you can fight. Now that's what the hero is going to be doing. What are the creatures going to be doing? Well, they will react to the actions of the hero. For example, if the hero moves, we could play this card face up. And that would say they are driven by madness. Move one cultist. Now, where's a cultist? They happen to know there's a cultist over there just beyond this room can move two spaces and they can move the sector in play. And these guys can move through doors as well, unless they've been blocked by the hero. Or when the hero's fighting, we could possibly play, I can hear them coming. And then that hero will have to re-roll all hits that they rolled. Or maybe it's not working as it should. And you can lead yourself up after they've done an interaction, maybe turn on the lights. And the next card that you play will be dangerous, meaning the bottom effect will take place. And that happens from card effects, if you've seen, or again, in these danger areas that you can lay on the board. Now, how can you lay them on the board? Because although the hero gets eight or more actions, depending upon how they use their adrenaline, you only get to react to them once per turn. If you react a second time, your card gets played sideways and blocks two of these slots. And the number of slots that you leave free at the end here is the number of danger tokens you can put into play to make the station more hazardous for the hero. So it's very much about do you want a benefit now or a benefit later. There are limits to how many monsters and how many danger tokens you can have on each level of the station. Now this deck was all about making the creatures more effective. You can get other types of decks. This one, for example, is more about manipulating the map and what's going on. In this case, when the hero loses a health, they'll have to lose an additional health. Well, in this case, it would move down there. Or maybe if they're searching for every item card that they draw, you can move creatures around one sector. And again, you do it secretly on here unless they come into the view of the hero. Or maybe, when this hero lost self-control bowling in here with this hybrid, they could also lose another self-control if I played this card. And you can see that you're trying to manipulate, wait to see what the hero does, try and force them into doing things, and then react to it with your cards. Now, when you do move aliens around or spawn aliens away from where the hero is, you must tell them there's a noise coming from the certain direction in which that has occurred. As I said, we're gonna play through the rounds. We'll get to nightmare mode when we get down here and it'll all get tougher. And the hero's gonna to have to complete one of these two missions 
and this mission before the aliens can kill them in the game off alone. This has been a Game Pit Pit Stop. For more videos like this, check out our YouTube channel. For more in-depth coverage of gaming, please find the Game Pit Podcast. Thank you.